Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ishida, and welcome to a special edition of the Northcast. Today, we're going to talk about Patch 120 that came out about a week ago, I think. Um, to talk about this, I got two very special guests. Um, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Hello, this is uh, Fabian. I'm uh, the lead designer of Awesome Nuts. Hi, I'm Tim. I'm the artist who created Isla. So. It's us. Welcome to the show, guys. I'm very excited to already have two guys from Ronimo here. It's a very, very big step in the right direction for the Northcast. So, guys, how are you doing? Yeah, great. Thanks. We've been working really hard on the patch, and uh, currently we've been working on the hotfix. But, uh, yeah, we're very glad on how Ada turned out. And uh, um, a lot of people have been playing uh, Ada. So, um, yeah, it's looking good. Yeah, the, the response has been great so far. So it's yeah, it's it's fantastic to hear what people are are thinking about her so far. So you guys are um, pleased with the results of the patch? I'd say so. Uh, so far, the um, yeah, the people have been positive about her, balance-wise, and uh, the way she looks, and. Well, that's that's the best we could hope for, I think. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say too, I absolutely love Isla um, as well. The design, as the balance and the voice work, fantastic job by Ashley Birch. Absolutely love her lines and everything. Just great. Yeah, um, yeah, she did. She did a great job. We were we contacted her in in the hopes of, well, she could deliver the same kind of quality she did for Borderlands, and well. The way it turned out, yeah, we couldn't have hoped for better, I think. <laughs> really great. That's great. We're going to talk about Isla uh, later on the show. But right now, I want to address all the balance changes in 1.20. We are The show will be built up like that. We will discuss patch 1.20. And after that, we will come to Ronimo itself. So, yeah, <laughs> um, balance-wise, Fabian, yeah, are you happy with patch 1.20, how that turned out? Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. Um, uh, obviously, uh, there's still work to be done, but um, yeah, it's every patch, the, the balance gets better and better. And uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident that we can get it balanced at some point. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's getting better. So yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, that's nice. How much work is behind such a patch? We we just see the 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 posts on the forums like oh, nerf that or buff that, and we know that the beta nodes are doing some testing for you. But what exactly is the workflow when you guys start working on a patch? Um, it's a couple of different things. Uh, first off, there's um, we have a sort of a to do list. That's the way I work. I got a long to-do list with all the stuff that everybody here at the office uh, uh, adds new bugs and new uh, balance tweaks in there, so I can review them and see if um, I approve approve them, and then um, um, I'll keep them in in or remove them. And the same goes with the beta notes. The beta notes just um, they give me feedback on the gameplay. Uh, I have discussions with them. Um, uh, through uh, TeamSpeak and through uh, through the um, um, through the forums, and in, th in that way I get new stuff for the to-do list, and I try to filter out as much as possible uh, on um, yeah things. Well, I try to to, to filter them and ma uh, make things. Uh, well, I keep things in that I think that work for the game, uh, and. Uh, um, and I add them to the to-do list and then from there I just started working on it and um, work, work through the list and um, so that's basically the, the overall balance, all the overall balance stuff and uh, besides that I'm also working on new characters um, and most of the time it's, it's one character at a time so I don't um, mix stuff up and just focus on one character and the, uh, the overall balance as a whole. Okay. Yep. Um, do you guys uh, how how much how 
big of a part does the do the forums play in that list when you do that list? Do you go and check your forums actively, or just check in from time to time? Yeah, I check the forums from time to time. Uh, in the beginning, at start of awesome months, I I checked them also almost every every day, but uh, yeah, it's 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 become so much work to check everything everybody says all the time. So I uh, I I. I ch now what I do nowadays, I check the, the beta notes forums, which I check everything, and then I uh, go to the other forums and see if uh, I find um, uh, feedback that's consistent with what, what the beta notes are finding as well, uh, and um, in that way I can can see what the tendencies are and what people are thinking, and uh, and, and and from there I can get a focus on what what needs to be done on the game. Okay, so uh, with the uh, you work very very um, tight with the beta nodes. Yeah, that's true. So, so uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, they help a lot. So it's um, it's uh, when we started out, we did all the balancing work internally, but the problem is that not everybody is as good uh, as they should be uh, at uh, at Ronimo. So um, uh, there's a very uh, we got. We got uh, develop, developers that are in League 9, developers that are in League 1 and it's really hard to create a balance based on that and to get it more consistently um, I used the, the beta nuts in that way and, and, and they helped me a lot with showing what's um, on a high level is, is what the balance should be and where the, the problems are. Okay. Um. What interests me is, uh, do you guys do a lot of number crunching, or do you just do the changes and tr then try it out and look how it feels? H how do you exactly test that? A bit of both. Um, mostly, it's on um, yeah, it's on the field um, because um, it is a bit hard to explain, but a lot of um, uh, numbers are um, theoretically there are there are balance. You can balance them like with math, but with math. But if you if you you play them in the game, and you use numbers, then it's um, it doesn't feel really balanced. Um, for an example, um, at the beginning of Asuna, so at the very start, uh, launching PC, we had um, the attack speeds. Uh, for instance, for Leon, and they are well theoretically they were perfect, <laughs> but uh, the problem was that they were perfect when people were hitting the um, the cooldown buttons always at the correct time, and um, um, yeah, since we changed that, so so Leon was doing like um, um, melee hits. And the melee hits, they um, they used to work on 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 the button press instead of the um, uh, holding the button down. So mm -hmm. in that way, theoret theoretically, you can just uh, punch the button always at the correct time and get the uh, get the most uh, attack speed out out of out of the the skill. But uh, practically, that didn't work because people weren't hitting it. On the right moment, and uh, didn't get the full attack speed out of the out of the, um, the melee. Hit. So um, once once we uh, we changed that, like it's one, it's one of the first patches was that I think it was uh, 1.3 or something like that. We added that uh, melee hits could be uh, hold down, so holding the button down just continues the attack, and that made Leon uh, extremely overpowered. And um, so even when the numbers are consistent on paper, that's what works in game is, is um, um, a yeah, very uh, more fluent kind of uh, way things work. Um, and it's really difficult to do the number crunching for that. But when it comes to prices and stuff like that, it's, it's, um, we, do, we mostly do it based on, on, um, uh, on number crunching and just see what um, what the what the items are compared to other items? 
um, do you have a table or a list um, which, uh, I don't know, equals uh, 5 DPS for 50 solar or something like that? Or how exactly mm -hmm. does that work with the prices? No, it's not that, that exact. It's more that if there's an attack speed upgrade and there's a damage upgrade, then the prices should be consistent between those two upgrades. So the damage upgrade shouldn't be... Um, the DPS shouldn't be better for one or the other uh, unless the item has more stages um, so it's in the long run a better item um, and so yeah there yeah so you can can basically um, see what if the items are compared to each other or in the right price range okay that's interesting so um, I uh, checked the forums for this episode to get some of the complaints or suggestions from the f uh, from the guys from the community out to you, mm -hmm. and I got um, three main points that are that the people are demanding. The first one is the topic of face mites and Lone Star that transforms slowly but surely into a brawler or more like a check of all trades. Um, are you planning on taking out the face mites? Um, well, this is a fun one because we we started out with um, with face mites, then we removed it because everybody was complaining about it, and then everybody was complaining that it wasn't um, uh, how do you call it? Um, it's fun enough or more. Uh, direct, like a direct, in, you didn't feel the direct influence of the, of the skill. So we put it back in there, and then now people are explaining again that it should be removed. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, um, I think a lot of the complaints are also coming from the time where they used uh, double missiles plus the face might to dish out, what was it, about 80 to 90 damage with one yeah. close up hit. Yeah. So that yeah, was so re uh, resolved lately, I saw that. And I felt it. Yeah, so the damage is reduced. But, um, yeah, I, I do think that, the, um, well, from from a game design perspective, I think that the face mites are, they feel better than the delay in damage. Um, that's more fun, in my opinion. Or for the, the cowboy player or the lone star player, but um, yeah, I'm I'm not sure if I if I wanted to change it because I'm really I think that the the balance between the items in the the grenade uh, skill are very balanced. Mm -hmm. um, I even think it's one of the most balanced skills in the game. Um, maybe not compared to other characters, but. Yeah, maybe other characters should be more uh, balanced towards that, something like that. But yeah, yeah. Since uh, one point and eighteen or nineteen, I think the balance is really good between the the items. And I've I've made a small change, I think, to uh, the explosion price. I think it went to one thirty or something. Uh, I'm not sure, but that went. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really really happy how that turned out, and I think the the balance between the items is really good. And if I'm going to add in the delay once again, then we'll probably mess up a lot of stuff uh, with that skill. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and basically the way I work is that I focus on the things that are uh, most important, and then go from there. And I think there are a lot of characters that need more attention than, than Lone Star at this point. Um, okay. For instance, Voltar is uh, a character that hasn't seen a lot of changes in the last uh, patches, and um, uh, mainly because he, he well, in my opinion, he needs an overhaul. Uh, something needs to be changed about his, uh, his main attack, or main heal. So, yeah, for my opinion, that's more important than, than then, yeah, changing loan sorts to at this point. Okay. Um, Clever Girl mentioned the last podcast that maybe even a rework of Volta is on the way. Can you confirm something? 
Yeah, I have an idea to change them up. Um, basically, what I want to try is uh, remove this heal, well, this heal on this main main uh, attack, and um, the the drones replace them with the drones. So the drones will be his main attack, and I want to make uh, or I, I want to go to try and make. This work with where drones are his uh, ammo, and you can use the ammo as a um, main attack. And um, uh, I want to make them more solid. So instead of um, well, technically they are at the, at the moment they are are um, um, uh, characters, and uh, and and uh, there's a way now with new systems that we got into the game that that we can make them more. Um, they don't have to be characters anymore, and um, which helps make them more reliant and how to, and, and, and can make them more um, they are more reliant and and, and 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 they work always the same way and more correctly with what the player wants. So I want to change that, and uh, I want to replace the drones with a with a strong heal. So he will keep his healing ability with his healing bot and. Uh, it's other heal, but um, this main attack will be a damage uh, dealing ability. I think that would be better. Mainly with main, maybe with some upgrades to add some healing uh, stuff to his drones or something like that. But I have to, I'll figure it out later uh, after I have built the main scores. Mm, sounds exciting. So, uh, sounds at least much more active than the current Volta. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's also one of the reasons why Volta needs to be changed. He's very passive character to play with. Yeah. Um, a second complaint I get a lot on the forums and even on the Mumble servers is that Stump, uh, Stump Punch on Scaldia seems very, very powerful because um, you get a reliable stun on the auto attack of a character. Um, how do you justify that? Um, well, I want to try to keep the items as uh, variety as possible. So I want have different items and don't want to have like damage, damage over time, attack speed, cooldown reduction, stuff like that. I want to make more, um, get more variety of items, uh, especially with more characters coming up. We want to make them feel different and keep make it, it keeps fresh. Um, so, Volta of uh, Skuldir is one of the only characters in the game that has a, a stun ability on his main attack. And um, that makes him unique. So if I can preserve it, then I would want to do that. Um, if it's overpowered, then I'll remove it or change it. Um, for the hotfix that's coming, we'll be adding a fix to his double punch. So his double punch will be removed. If I'm correct. Oh no, no, I'm, I'm making a mistake here. Um, we have a fix, but we won't be. I don't think we will be adding it to one point or, uh, to, or to, the, to the hot fix because it's. Mm, mm, there's a chance that it will be game breaking, so we'll. <laughs> we, we, there's something that happens a lot. We make changes and we, we fix something, and then there's a big chance something else will be broken, and then it'll, it'll have to wait one patch. Until it will be released, so we can make sure everything's fine and we don't have to do one or two uh, more hot fixes after this. Um, because it takes uh, it takes a complete day for us to to make this um, for for making for making a new build. Um, so we want to keep that as a minimum as possible. Um, so the fix of scroll there there is fix of scroll here for his double punch, which automatically will reduce his. Um, uh, uh, the strength of the stun upgrades for the, the rubber duck upgrade, um, but it will see the light in 1.21. So okay, you have to wait for it. <laughs> okay, uh, sounds good, at least for me. Um, a last question or a last complaint that came up are the solar items, um, specifically piggy bank. Because it supports the rush tactics that um, dominates the current meta, where that is very burst orientated and very early game orientated. Few games last longer than 10 to 15 minutes. 
Um, some people are even demanding to take out the piggy bank. Will you respond to that? And why? And how? Um, yeah, since uh, since I've changed the um, the whole uh, utility row um, or or changed the help system, um, the other upgrades became more uh, useful. Especially uh, the money upgrades. I think the the, the solar tree was uh, already nerfed quite a lot, and um, I don't think any nerfs were uh, done to uh, the piggy bank. I'm not sure, but yeah, if it's if it's too overpowered, then it probably needs to be nerfed. And it's it's a very easy upgrade to nerf because you can just reduce the amount of gold it costs uh, or, or, the, or the amount of gold it, it uh, provides and it's, it's very easy to balance um, so I'll, I'll probably not remove it but I'll, uh, yeah when, once the next beta starts I'll probably take a look into it and, and might change it okay um, my last question I personally have is um, you talk a lot about you focus on one single knot. Uh, did you? Um, so you just buff on Earth a single knot. Uh, did you ever consider buffing a certain uh, counter to a knot that is overpowered instead of nerfing it? Sorry, can you repeat the question? So buffing, what what buffing? <laughs> yes. Um, um, instead of nerfing a certain character, you just buff the counter to that. Did you ever consider or do that? All oh, right, the counter. Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't really see. Um, I don't really design things uh, to be counters to other stuff. Um, maybe the only thing that I really built as a counter was the 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 reflect on plants uh, plants explode for Genji's uh, cocoon. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's in the whole design process. That was the only time I really actually thought of, I thought about doing a counter to something. Um, but um, from a balancing perspective, it's always what I've, I've seen is it's always better to um, to buff something instead of nerfing something else. Um, just because people. People seem to, to like it more than, well, it's it, it's no fun getting nerfed and it's more fun to get buffed, of course. Um, uh, obviously, they have, they're both have, have to be done, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really difficult. Um, there are a few characters in the game, um, uh, mainly the, 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 the three starting characters that are but they've been really strong from uh, from the start off with, with Prodigy and Leon and uh, Lone Star. And it's it's um, it's really difficult to, to balance um, a whole set of characters uh, around it because um, um, it's not only um, not only the, the balance between the characters but it's also Main f also a factor that, that plays a role in this is that uh, these three characters are played a lot more than the other characters um, and I've changed the the, um, the way things uh, unlock in the game uh, and to uh, we did that a couple patches ago where characters unlock way faster and um, um, I've in the in this hotfix actually we're gonna Increase the um, solar gain uh, 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 two times per 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 match, so your people will be uh, will be will be leveling twice as fast uh, when this hotfix goes live. Um, and um, yeah, so that 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 will help a little bit to um, get more players playing the other characters. And getting more playtime on those characters, and uh, which would increase skill uh, for players uh, playing those characters. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's it's something really difficult to 
to do with with a game where our character are unlocked. Um, yeah, I, I might even change it later on to to maybe just get all the characters unlocked uh, after doing the tutorial and uh, only unlock the the, the items. Um, in in the best best scenario possible, I would do an overall of the whole meta game. Um, but um, yeah, that would be so much work. I don't think that's, that would be possible now. But um, yeah, it's a difficult difficult thing to to, to fix. But um, yeah, I think uh, um, our our main focus is doing the balance for the, the top players, and most of the top players they know the way around with all the characters. And um, yeah, I just try to focus on that. And um, with the lower players in lower leagues are obviously important, um, um, but yeah, it's 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 difficult because you're not balancing characters for one type of group with uh, players, but it's com a complete community with tens of thousands of players um, with all different kinds of skill levels. This makes a really uh, really hard job. Yeah, I think so. But we always appreciate your work and we hope you continue on that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, to get a little bit away from balance, a topic we get enough of on the forums. Tim. Yeah. You created ILAM. Oh, yeah. We, yeah, I think it's uh, a joint effort between Fabian and me. And mm -hmm. I'm the guy responsible for, for mainly for her visuals. Of course, I gave a lot of input on uh, the way she plays or what, what she feels like uh, playing and a bit of that because I'm constantly testing her in-game to see how she looks and every, everything's working all right. So it's a lot of back and forth. So, but yeah, that way we're both responsible for her, basically. I just wanted to thank you for creating my new main. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I, I absolutely love the way she plays that high risk, high reward um, pl uh, style of play that requires her. Yep. That, that she requires uh, words. <laughs> uh, I just love it. So, um, what was the first version of Idol like? I remember Q mentioning on the live stream you guys did for, for the release that the. Um, that the character changed significantly during development. Give us some insight. Uh, she changed in, in the visual department, so to say. She changed quite a lot. Uh, Design-wise, she did. Yet, uh, the changes might, might seem minor, but they had a big impact on the way she played. Things like uh, the cooldown on her, bo um, her rage, rage ball. Uh, it used to be non-existent, so you could just toggle it on and off, on and off, constantly. It it was fun to play when you were playing against bots, but once you start playing against players, it was so overpowered. It's, it was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> her uh, her actual uh, gameplay was uh, determined rather early on. Uh, I think there was an uh, an idea of her way back when we started doing new characters. I think it was mentioned on the forums as well, it was a character called Glitch. He was able to fly around and uh, without collision, like Ayla can now. Uh, the thing that got added, added was the, the third eye ability, which has a big impact on her. The way she plays is a big part of her, and it's something uh, Fabian came up with and implemented. So what, um, regarding what she looked like, um, First, the way she was called during development was the vampire. It's and it was something the design was focused on as well. So early on, she actually looked like a bat at one point, uh, a bit of a humanoid bat, and uh, she had all kinds of looks. She even was a robot at a, so a certain point. There were ideas for that. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, at a uh, at one point, we uh, narrowed it down to the little psycho girl, and from that on. Uh, there were all kinds of weird ideas. Uh, I think Kuhn mentioned it as well during the stream. There was, at a certain point, there was an idea for her hair to be all uh, like fire and elemental and waving around and uh, uh, flowing right behind her. But that was almost impossible to, to realize. 
So it was sad because the idea was really cool. And, sounds uh, cool. Yeah, it's, it sounds good. It looked cool as well in the concept art, but uh, when we even thought about making it a reality in game with all our movements and our directions, it would be we'd have to make concessions and it would lo it'd lose a lot of the coolness, so to speak. And so yeah, that's that's why we got to. Uh, what she's like now. There was a, a point where we had almost all her graphics done. Uh, she had, uh, and she was actually looking different. She had a ponytail. She had uh, a, a more uh, square-looking uh, brace around her neck. Uh, she had different colors, but then we decided she didn't actually was in line with the rest of the characters as much. So we did the overall. We gave her the hair she has now, the color she has now. So that's basically how it went a bit. So, um, how did she exactly get changed from a vampire to a psycho girl? What is the crea uh, creative process when you guys create a character? It's 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 weird how that goes. It's over time we uh, we the, uh, the story of a vampire just changed. We we start thinking of oh, what she's what is she actually like? At, at first it's just oh she's a vampire and she's a psycho little girl. Oh that that's cool. And then we start creating this character and we start drawing her and we all kinds of concepts but at a certain point we start thinking well what what is her character like what's her backstory what is she who is she and then uh, there's ideas thrown around all the time and people uh, get, get uh, at, at a certain point somebody comes with the idea of oh well maybe if she's just crazy maybe if she's just not not necessarily a vampire but that she's just really angry and just doing damage around her so um, it's just an, uh, a slow evolving of the the way the character is. She's still called the vampire, but she's not actually a vampire anymore. So that's <laughs> that's how it goes. That's why it, at first the first designs were actually a bat because that's the thing uh, you relate to. Uh, that's the first thing you think about when you say vampire or bats. But it it restricts you a lot in the um, design uh, for a, a character visually. So you start uh, expanding, and that's when you get to uh, a little girl, and then the the whole vampire thing slowly uh, fades away, and you create you uh, you get to what what you have now. Is that the way you design every new character? You get a a good idea, and then you take it to the team, you discuss it, and it evolves like that. That's uh, that's how the mo most characters are created. There were, um, for instance, Genji. Uh, was called the butterfly during development. So, but uh, her, his backstory came uh, a bit later. But at first, he actually there was concept art of him looking like a, a bulky space marine with butterfly wings and all that kind of stuff. So <laughs> oh, that sounds <laughs> awesome. <laughs> a lot of those things just naturally evolved because at a certain point you want to expand on the idea. You don't want to get stuck on a single uh, focus. So. Take Isla, for example, and being a vampire, you, you you don't want to get stuck on the old idea of a vampire because that you already you quickly uh, fall into all these uh, pitfalls with cliches of vampires. Like, oh yeah, they're, they're slender, they're tall, they're they're bats, uh, all the all that kind of stuff. So, and you uh, naturally want to take a step back, look at the character, and say, well, what else is possible? What if it's not a vampire, but just uh, what what else can it be? And that's how you slowly uh, get to uh, a certain idea you like. And that's where we... As, and mostly it's that point where the team goes, Oh, well, that's a cool idea. That's where we're going to go. And then we pursue that, and that's how characters get made. <laughs> um, how is the cooperation with uh, the creative team, the artists, and the uh, programming team? Do you design a character and then give them the finished idea, like, look, we got this character, do the programming or do some skills for that? Or do you work together on that? Uh, it's uh, a lot of uh, cooperation. It's uh, mainly cooperation between the art team and the design team, because uh, the, uh, the coding team has, has made some awesome tools for uh, for the design team to, to create all kinds of um, cool characters. They can do all kind of wacky things. A lot of sometimes it doesn't really work out all too well. They <laughs> the design team hacks all kind of things together to make stuff work and it breaks the game. And sometimes that's fun. It's uh, it has fun results. 
but they they can do that all alone. They can create all, the whole character uh, from scratch without ever without rarely having to uh, ra ra uh, to rarely have to address the, the coding team for any features. Uh, it's it's when uh, completely new things have to be uh, added that the coding team is uh, is well. Uh, pulled into the job like for instance we're, we're doing that with uh, Swiggins right now his, his chain uh, ability is something that that's not is not in the game and uh, wasn't in the game and it needs to it needs to be made it needs to be coded into the game for it uh, for it to work but aside from that uh, design creates the character uh, mostly with placeholder graphics and then the art team just starts uh, we start to slowly develop the character. Uh, first we insert, so insert some stills uh, for every animation and then we uh, slowly develop it into a, a moving thing and then there's a constant back and forth between the art team and the design team like oh the the, the rage sphere need, it needs to be bigger okay then we have to change the graphic or the eye well it shoots uh, it has a longer range or the hitbox changes and it's all kinds of things that have to go have to be taken into the cut, into consideration for the for the art. So that's a, a lot of back and forth um, between design and art during the development of a character. Okay, um, what about voice actors and music? Do you guys decide? Um, do you guys have the point where you're like, oh, you know who would be a great voice for that character, Ashley Birch, or do you just decide that at the end when the character is already done, or is sometimes the voice act within the concept of the character? Uh, mostly, it's. Uh during the development it's not necessarily necessarily at the start but it's definitely not at the end as well uh somewhere during development we're like when the character has been we have a, a, a good idea what what she's gonna look like what he's gonna look like and then we're like okay now we can start looking uh, at what do we want uh, her to sound like so for instance for isla uh, when we uh, got set on the idea of this little girl who's who's crazy um we uh, we started a topic uh, on our forums and on our internal forums and people just start tossing in ideas for oh, who would be a cool voice actor for this character and people just uh, throw around all kinds of ideas and then uh, it's not necessarily uh, some uh, the idea has to be realistic because oh we can you we can ask this amazing actress who's done voice work for all these great movies but she yeah it wouldn't be realistic for us to approach uh, someone like that so uh, that's why a lot of those uh, YouTube people who do voice work are, are great for, for this game, for uh, do some voice acting. But um, Ashley Birch came into the picture um, around somewhere or halfway around development and uh, we uh, we knew what she did for Borderlands and oh, that was kind of like, oh, that's, that's what uh, Isla sounds like. So we approached her and we asked her, well, can you do some tests for us? Uh, would you be interested? And uh, she was really fast to respond, and she was, and she gave us a few samples, and we're like, yeah, well, that's it. That's that's what that's what uh, that what she's gonna sound like. So uh, we started a cooperation with her. Um, we write up a lot of lines. We write up a script, but we think she all her voice lines for the teleports, for the attacks, and we send it to her, and she uh, she just records it all. She was great to work with, by the way. She was really fast and really professional. So. And uh, regarding the music, that's mostly uh, nearing the end of the character's development. She, uh, we uh, contact Sonic Picnic, uh, who do all the music and all the sound effects for the game. And uh, we give them some ideas for what we, uh, we think the music should sound like. Like uh, a best example for Isla was we sent the, um, the, the, the tune from Hit Girl from, uh, Hit Girl from uh, Kick-Ass. Well, this is a bit of like what we think should be her killing spree or what should be her theme and they just go to work with it and then uh, at a certain point they send us uh, a file with uh, this is what we got and then either we're very excited or we're not that that excited but mostly we're very excited about what they made <laughs> <laughs> sounds good yeah, it's great to work with them and uh, the voice actors have all been uh, great to work with as well okay so, um, as we all know, you guys work at Ronnie Mo, the Robot Ninja Monkey company, under our great overlord Joost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, can you guys tell us who else works at Eronimo? We we get some people. We see people like uh, Kuhn or Martin or people like that. But who works at Eronimo? Who is who? Um, so we got um, Mr. Joe's. He is the lead programmer. Um, we have the seven. He's one of the seven founders. So uh, of Eronimo. Um, I'm one of the founders as well. And then we got uh, Oliver. You probably know him. He's, uh, he played also in the APL. Uh, I actually had contact with him uh, recently. So yeah, yeah. He's, he's really active in the beta group as well. Um, he's one of the, the artists. Um, and uh, then we got Gijs. He's also he's the lead artist. And he does a lot of uh, uh, concept art for the game. And um, then we got Martijn. Uh, Martin he is uh, also one of the artists, um, same as Oliver. Um, he does uh, animations and uh, uh, character art and in-game art stuff like that. Um, then we got Ralph. Uh, he's our best uh, Lone Star player at the office. Um, <laughs> Uh, he's also an artist. He he's really good at doing uh, particles and uh, um, like the detail detail kind of stuff. Um, he's really good at that and and, and polishing the game. Um, he's he's also very he's almost manic on on doing this kind of little details in the game to make it in in, in the levels to make them really really shine. Uh, for instance, if you if you if you're on Ribbit Four um, and you walk you walk off a cliff or you walk off an edge, you will see little crumbles of, of dirt and ground fall off, and that's all particles and animations that he custom made, and he made triggers in the whole whole level to activate those particles to to, to animate. Wow! And it was uh, it was a lot of work. And uh, yeah, but he really loves to do that kind of stuff. And you can see bats in the background flying around, which are actually, actually were, there were particles. Uh, uh, nobody has a clue how he has done it, but he made 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 bats from particles. Um, yeah, he's he's really good at that, that kind of stuff. Yeah, he, he can work some magic on the levels. Uh, it's always great to see him work on those, those kinds of, uh, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of people just play levels and they're really busy focusing on the, the fighting and whatnot but I really recommend people to just start a practice game and just walk around and just look at all the background everything's moving and there's always stuff happening and it's uh, it's great uh, the level of detail is put into those kind of things and uh, obviously there's Kuhn and we all know Kuhn of course and he's, <laughs> uh, yeah, he's our, our main uh, animator uh, he's, he's um, yeah, together with uh, Tim, he's, he's probably one of the, the two main uh, animators uh, on the team. Um, let's see, so that's the whole art team. So we we have a sort of divide in the in the team between art, design, and programming. We're all in the same room, but uh, we got this kind of art islands and an art uh, and design islands and a uh, programming island or group of tables. And um, I'm at the design uh, island, so to speak, with uh, with Jasper. Um, and Jasper has uh, uh, did a lot of work on the AI uh, of the the bots. Um, so he's he's a very technical kind of designer. Um, I do a lot. I do almost every. every uh, I do all the localization stuff, all the backstory stuff, and all the kind of stuff. But, um, and and I design. Uh, I do a lot of the, the items and skills and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so that's we are the, the two uh, the, uh, main designers in Um Yeah, we just recently hired uh, Thomas. He's a new designer at Ronimo. Um, he just started uh, yesterday, so he's, he's very fresh. Uh, although in his internship before he worked with us, he worked in Osmots as well. Um, so there's three, uh, three designers, and uh, then we got one producer, this is Robin, um, he really loves to do marketing stuff as well and uh, do interviews, he's, 
Uh, yeah, probably people know him from uh, PAX East and uh, from other um, um, uh, we've got a convention and stuff like that where, where he goes to and um, um, yeah, and he does does all the production and keeps things running and uh, helps us get getting things done. Um, let's see, then we got the, the programming team, which is uh, Joost, of course, and uh, Marta. Uh, he's uh, mainly focusing on the networking of the game. Uh, he did also do the networking for the PlayStation and for uh, Xbox 360. Um, um, but he also is doing gameplay designs, gameplay programming stuff like that. And then we got uh, Michiel. Um, he's uh, he's the worst Leon player <laughs> on the office. No, I'm just kidding. He's <laughs> <laughs> Any <laughs> best play- cheaters. <laughs> best cheater. He's very really, really good at, at uh, finding exploits in the game. And um, yeah, he's one of the best uh, testers in the office. Um, uh-huh. But uh, yeah, if he, he's, uh, he does a lot of. Uh, uh, programming for the um, uh, the back end of the game, and also for uh, a little bit for game uh, gameplay. Um, but most of the gameplay um, programming is done by um, by Thijs. Uh He has been almost in all projects uh, doing uh, gameplay um, programming and uh, fixing bugs and uh, stuff like that. And 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 then uh, improving the tools for us, uh, for the designers. And um, yeah, we uh, our last member uh, is uh, is Ted, and he uh, well he's not a member anymore. He he, he left to another very big studio in in France. But uh, he um, yeah he he has been working a lot on uh, on the, the Mac version of the game and. Um, uh, also a lot of work on the, the networking uh, behind the game, and he just uh, left us recently. Uh, and we haven't found a replacement for him yet, but uh, yeah, we, he's uh, he's dearly missed. So uh, um, yeah, and he's a very good friend as well. Yeah. Lastly, we we shouldn't forget the interns. <laughs> They're a big part of the studio, and they they really help us out. Like uh, at the moment, we. The only ones left are uh, Dan, a, uh, a designer uh, intern, and then there's uh, Nicole, a, uh, an art intern who, uh, who was responsible for uh, uh, some of the uh, character, uh, big character splash screens you get when, uh, when you select the character. She did, uh, for instance, she did a- all, the, all three of the Ayla screens. So uh, she did some uh, amazing uh, uh, work on that. So the interns are a uh, big part of the studio as well. Okay, so um, please describe us until Kuhn finally comes up with that studio tour. <laughs> what doesn't? An... <laughs> is he is he actually working on that? Ooh. Uh... <laughs> well, uh, we're we're still planning to do that sometime. He's not he's not solely responsible for that. I think so... I found a camera somewhere, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know where the camera is at this point. It's a bit of a mess in the office now, right now, so. <laughs> let's say so something is getting done with the camera. Let's, let's say it's still a work in progress. <laughs> okay, okay, we can live with that. So, um, please describe to us what does an average day in the offices of Ranima look like? Except for Yoast whipping you guys to work. <laughs> oh, well, uh, yeah, it, it, I think it's, it varies a lot per person. There's uh, uh, at least one thing we all have in common, and that's the lunch break at 12 o'clock. <laughs> but uh, aside from that, I think it, it really depends on who you ask. Uh, for me, uh, personally, uh, for example, I just come in and I just check a few of the forums, mainly the uh, the official forums, uh, the Reddit, uh, the Osmos Reddit. I just start working on where I left off, uh, be it uh, animations, be it some concept art for characters or, or other, other things in the game. And I just work on that until finished or time to go home <laughs> and there's uh, of course there's always stuff coming up maybe we have we'll have a meeting about uh, the backstory of a character or 
some uh, upgrades for characters or we uh, do some testing or so, uh, where everybody uh, in the studio uh, uh, joins in to just test maybe the newest character or the newest uh, balance changes so it's not like uh, Fabian says of course the better not to do a lot of testing we still do a lot of testing here, uh, here in the studio but it's not as reliable but it's still a good indication of where things are going so uh, that's for, as an artist, that's basically what I do <laughs> from day to day. Fabian, maybe some insight from the uh, design or programming standpoint? Yeah, well the programmer is quite silent all day. They're just programming and typing ones and zeros, I guess. And uh, <laughs> what well, we design, it's, it's um, yeah, a lot of walking around and showing people what we're doing and uh, trying to get everybody involved in the design process. And um, yeah, most most of the days I I start up my computer and do a lot of emails uh, almost the whole morning um, because I also do all the business stuff of, or or all the uh, a lot of business stuff for the company. So um, um, yeah, I have to check all those stuff and uh, or emails. So that's that takes up all my morning. Um, uh, maybe do a meeting with um, 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 about. Uh, uh, the story of of uh, of new character, or um, uh, doing a brainstorm on a new character, or uh, discussing with uh, Jasper on new items for uh, for Ayla or uh, Swiggins or anything like that. And um, uh, yeah, and then then we have lunch, and after lunch I'll uh, I'll go into the tools and uh, um, yeah, start uh, working through the to-do list make sure everything's done there and then uh, work on, on new stuff uh, and uh, creating new items and uh, testing new skills um, and yeah stuff like that tweaking numbers and that's mostly the, what I do the whole day <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's it's look I have a beer <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, sounds like you can, uh, uh, guys are living together like um, some kind of big family over there. It, you could almost say so. Well, the, the, off the office is not that big, so we're pretty uh, tightly packed around here. <laughs> uh, Any fun stories you want to share? Mm, that's a tough one. There's always, always all kinds of things happening. Uh, the biggest, uh, the, the biggest upset over the day is if somebody's late and they have to bring in some pie. So that's always that's uh, always great, and we have uh, guys doing his pie dance. So that's that's always <laughs> that's always great fun. Of course, the uh, the internal play tests. Everyone here is so uh, uh, involved with it, with the game, and they're also excited that when we're playing, we're play testing. Sometimes we're forgetting we're play testing, and uh, things get almost get out of control when people are all uh, screaming through the office that. Uh, Things are unfair. If they're losing, they can be very sore losers. So that's bound to uh, bound to give uh, give us a good time. <laughs> well, for the winners at least. <laughs> what else do you guys do for fun? Do you do something else together, or is it just work? Oh, no, definitely, we do a lot of stuff together. Um, for instance, every Thursday we have uh, we we always play games uh, after work hours. Mostly uh, Dota 2. <laughs> or is, ah. Yeah, it's, you can see where the influence of this uh, of Awesome Nuts came from. And uh, <laughs> aside from that, we yeah we do all kinds of stuff together. We, uh, we go uh, eating, we go snowboarding, we go whatever. It's just it's a, we're not just colleagues. We're all friends here as well. So oh, sounds good. So um, as a final question before we wrap this up. Who is your favorite knot, and why is it your favorite knot? Ooh, that's uh, I don't think I have to think about it very long. <laughs> my my <laughs> favorite's been uh, gnaw for uh, for quite a long time. Vinny's been taken over his spot a bit uh, a while back, but I always keep coming back to gnaw. He's just uh, and ju not just because it, people claim he's overpowered right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's a fun character, just uh, his whole, not just the way he plays, but also voice acting, which was done by Martijn. And uh, it's a fun character, I love playing him. 
So it was it was fun to do uh, to come up with all kinds of uh, because I was the one responsible for all the skin ideas which people could vote on as well. So it was great fun to come up with all kinds of uh, cool outfits for him, and I'm glad uh, I'm happy with uh, the one uh, the community picked because I think uh, Gnabot is a uh, uh, fun uh, a fun skin for him. Yeah, my 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 um, favorite character is uh, Coco. Uh, I don't know. I've, I've I've played a lot with her, and uh, <laughs> I, I win the most games with her. Um, but um, yeah, I, I just like to poke people with uh, with lightning ball. Um, I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, I, I I really enjoy playing with her. Um, I think my second favorite knot will be Leon. Uh, I, I he just got a special spot in my heart. I don't know, he's this stupid French guy, uh, French lover, kind of comedian, <laughs> and I really love the whole idea of him, so, uh, yeah, I really like him. I think that's also the reason why uh, Akiyon was, was uh, uh, we, made, we made that his home planet, um, and um, yeah, I really like him, so. Uh, I wish I wish there could be more chameleons in the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could release chameleon skins for every knot. Yeah, that's really <laughs> actually a good idea. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, do it, please. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, there's a lot of um, kind of sea sea themes in Awesome Knots. A lot of um, uh, um, um, water related knots. Yeah, water related knots. knots. Yeah, with Coco and. Foggy G and and I was Swiggins and uh, yeah, might be good to do some at some point some water level or that would be cool. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. That would be yeah, that would be really interesting. Anyway, thank you very much for coming. I am highly honored to have somebody uh, guys from Ronimo here. I hope we can do something like this again, maybe for the next patch, or maybe when something else uh, something else that's big happens. Anyway, thank you guys for coming. It was wonderful. Yeah. No, no problem. Thank you very much. We, we, uh, I'm working on Swiggins right now, so we'll um, yeah, maybe we can do uh, another one of these when uh, when Swiggins uh, comes out or something like that. Mm, yeah, sure. Why not? Right. The Norcast will return on Saturday or Sunday for our European friends. Uh, we'll we'll be joined by the guys of the team Free Headed Monkey. Until then, my name, my name has been Ishida, and this has been the Norcast.